You all know the poem, uh, Lita and the Swan. You know, Yeats' poem, A Sudden Blow, The Great Means Being, you know, oh, I, I won't do that. I'll just do my pantoon. Um, and I wrote this for Carolyn Kaiser, who has a wonderful pantoon called The Parents' Pantoon, <coughs> um, which is dedicated to me. <laughs> Bits of his down under my fingernails, a gob of his spit behind one ear, and a nasty welt where the nib of his feet bit down as he came. It was our first date. <laughs> a gob of his spit behind one ear, his wings still fanning. I should have known better. I should have bitten him off on our first date. <laughs> and yet, for some reason, I didn't press charges. I wiped off the wet. I should have known better. They gave me the morning after pill and shook their heads when I wouldn't press charges. The yoke that was meant to be Helen, I'm oh, sorry, the yoke that was meant to hatch as Helen failed to congeal thanks to the morning after pill and dropped harmlessly into the toilet. So that nothing became of the lost yoke Helen, Troy, wooden horse, forestalled in one swallow, flushed harmlessly away down the toilet. The swan had by then stuffed Euripides, Sophocles, leaving out Helen, Troy, Agamemnon, the whole house of Atreus, the rest of Greek tragedy, stuffed in my head every strophe of Sophocles. His knowledge forced on me, yet Bird kept the power. What was I to do with ancient Greek history lodged in my cortex to no avail? I had his knowledge, I had no power, the year I taught Yeats in a classroom so pale that a mist enshrouded the ancient religions and bits of his down flew from under my fingernail. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear. <laughs> you can see what fun it was to, to play with this and just use bits. Yeah. But you do have to wrap a pantoom around so that your last line and your first line are the same. You know, it's like the serpent with his tail. And you, know, you have to come all the way back to that. But instead of having to repeat the whole line, I could take little bits of it. Um, they gave me the morning after pill. Uh, it's just picked up in that line about um, the yoke that was meant to hatch as hell and failed to congeal, thanks to the morning after pill, and so on. So you, have, you, know, you have to keep on going. But I think students like that too, they get, that's kind of a fun game to play. And poetry is a game, and it is fun. It's meant to be fun, I think. It's also meant to move you, um, and it's meant to stir you, but it should be gratifying. Um, I really wrote Pantoon with Swan because I so resented Lita and the Swan, because it's so sexist. And so <laughs> this was sort of my rejoinder. Um, anyway, that's memorization. That's where we were. <laughs> um, I used to make my students memorize 30 lines. These are graduate students. Every, every Monday when they came to class, they would have to write out from memory the 30 lines that they had committed during the preceding week. And there were students who had a very hard time memorizing. And I could, I could be, um, uh, I was very understanding, because I know that for some people it's easy, and for others, um, bits of it just keep jumping away from you. Um, it's sort of like learning to play the piano and learning to memorize a piece of the piano. If you get stuck at one place, you almost always get stuck at that same place going back. Um, but I had a lot of students who complained bitterly and said, you know, why are we doing this, and et cetera, et cetera. And I said, look, I'm doing you a favor. I'm giving you a memory bank to draw on when you are taken political prisoner. <laughs>